call the Finance Committee meeting to order for October 20th. First one, uh, sales tax report and treasurer's report. Sales tax looks good. Well, I don't know. It's Noah's first month and it's down in comparison to what Alan was doing. <laughs> but he did a nice job on REITs. Yeah, he yeah. made up for it on the REITs. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Um, so I'm guessing, Alan, would you take us to the report? As you guys know, this is my second meeting. Yeah. Uh, first time going through the tax collections and read, uh, as you guys can tell, the sales tax is strong. Mm -hmm. And REIT is also strong. It uh, looks like we've budgeted $600,000 for REIT for this year, and we're, we've now exceeded that um, for 2017, which is great. Now, what I don't know is if this budget figure is actually a biennial budget or if that's just a what we've allotted for 2017, so I'll follow up and I believe it's just 2017. Just 2017, yeah. yeah. We'd be surprised oh, and, yeah. and, and disappointed if it was a biannual <laughs> yeah. number. Because <laughs> we yeah. believe we're tracking well ahead of plan. Yeah. If it was biannual, we're really doing good. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Exactly. Yeah. Any questions or follow up items on any of the sales tax or REIT? No, no, I don't think so. Okay. And moving on to the fund balance report. We have in the general fund an uh, ending balance again the ending of September of three million seventy six uh, special revenue funds. We have a balance of nearly four million dollars. Our capital construction project funds uh, seven million one hundred thousand dollars. Our water sewer funds eight million six hundred thousand dollars roughly. Our storm drainage, uh, $2,345,000. And last, our, our fiduciary accounts and agency accounts, $2,300,000 for a total current ending fund balance of $28,304,000. So it looks like healthy balances in all accounts. The next item on here, we have uh, the Tremont Wine Project. So we went through uh, first draft last month, and again, uh, we're going to keep rolling this out every month. So since we met last month, we have got updated project plans and projections, which is our top column from the contractor. Again, the middle is where we're going to record our actual expenditures, and then the last um, set of rows down here is how we're going to allocate those expenditures to our different funding sources. Um, one thing I thought was interesting, and this was kind of hot off the press on Friday, um, we just updated this um, last yesterday, Thursday. Um, so we're going to look into this, but if you look at what was planned for in June, uh, you have $21,000 of construction, administration, and inspection and support. And if you come down to the actual expenses, we spent roughly $24,000 paid out. Now, if you go to July, they planned about $25,000. And again, we spent about forty-six thousand. We moved to uh, August. They planned about fifty thousand. We spent about seventy-five thousand. So if you notice, we're actually paying out a lot more than what they had. You see, that's not a plan. good trend. That's <coughs> not the right trend. So that's something that uh, we identified last night, and we were questioning it ourselves in the finance office. Going, okay, what what does that mean? Um, so we're that, looking at that trend run, con continues to run that way. We're going to have a significant overage. Well, we started to. Change the course in September. Right. It seemed like not much, but track. we changed it <laughs> on, on track at least. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. we're gonna look, we're gonna take a closer look at these um, previous ones and see if they were miscoded in some way, um, maybe not meant for this project. But so we're gonna look into that. But I just want to point that out because that's what the spreadsheet is supposed to help us do. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. This is what they tell us. This was what's coming in. What's the anomaly? What's the story? Um, and we haven't seen the expenses come in, but I keep hearing that there's a million dollars worth of expenses coming in. Um, so I, that I've heard for next week's right. council meeting. If it's not, then it's two weeks out. But okay. their, their mobilization, they had to hit a threshold, and they've hit it. And so they get paid for their mo mobilization, which is, you know, four or 500000 on top of the work that they're doing. So, And, and really, in an 18, it's a little more than 18 month, $18 million project, you know, 18 months, we should be seeing almost a million dollars a month. Otherwise, the project's not running on track. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's right. a good benchmark, too. And I know at the end, asphalt's very expensive, so we've got 
you know, some more expensive, some expensive yeah. at, at the end. So that is a completely true, but we ought to be $750,000 a month at least going out on that project well, if it's on track. that's what we're budgeted starting in September. Correct. Basically. If you look yep. at September, you're at 900000 yeah. then we have a 1.2, you know, it's basically a million dollars a month yeah. Yeah. from that point. Yep. Right. So. And they have, it. from when I've driven by there, it just appears as though they're moving right along. Oh, yeah. yeah, they're, yeah, they're doing. There's sure. one um, little hitch with it that they've identified that we're waiting for the state to prove on the outfall that goes underneath the bridge. There's some, there's some, you know, the equivalent of a French drain down over there that wasn't in the plans and how they modify that to get our new stormwater well, through be, what's there without. It's interesting to sync that up though, because if you look at the cumulative expense budget, 1.3 million through September, and we've only spent 500,000. Yeah. Right. So yeah. cumulative, we're, we're behind. Yeah. I, yeah. And that's, I think, why is that that little area. The other thing, Mark mentioned it, maybe he didn't, because he wasn't at work study. Um, we were progressing with doing our own project for the Schedule 74, and it's possible that we're going to get to expand what's called the APE, the area of effect. And we'll have to do uh, probably spend 50000 in cultural resources to make sure they don't have any Indian artifacts. Uh, it's the, the, the residences. There's 10 residential properties that weren't in the area effect. And if, and if we include those properties, now we can roll that Schedule 74 into the contractor's contract, and then he can control the phasing. Because what, what we're learning is those, it's not a matter, there's an, those transmission lines don't have enough slack in them to move them out of the way and they're gonna have to get moved multiple times, which we have to pay for with from PSE. So by doing it this way, the contractor can do it, the project in chunks and phases, which would be an ex at, at, on their timeline. If we hire a separate contractor, that gets more expensive because they're on site a lot more. So uh, we're hopeful. Tripping over each other. Yeah. That, yeah, we're gonna get approval to expand the APE and that We'll spend a little bit of money on this cultural resource analysis, but then we'll be able to add that as a change order to reconnect those homes to the current contractor. Right. So the next item I want to report, um, we had our mid biennial review study session, uh, and I thought it went pretty well. Um, so I, I want to bring forward just a summary to capture the budget amendments that we're proposing and that the council kind of agreed to uh, in the study session. So uh, when we come forward on the, 20, uh, the 14th of November, uh, these would be the budget amendments we bring forward. Um, again, nothing new here. We look at the Salmonberry, 75000 uh, we have identified a funding source e either to be fund balance or transportation Traffic, impact, tra transportation impact, impact fees. fees. Um, and I only say both because I wanted to check the fund balance to see how healthy the fund balances are. Mm -hmm. If we can't use uh, transportation impact fees for whatever reason, do we have sufficient fund balance? And we do. Uh, uh, similarly, uh, the 5000 for the capital project this will be a transfer, uh, I think, from transportation impact fees as well. And this is a capital fund, the 304. The water, the water, uh, the rest are prim primarily water at 623,000 uh, for the chlorinator, the pumping, uh, the purchasing of the water and the census meter reader replacement equipment. Again, uh, gonna come out fund balance and we check that against what we had budgeted uh, for the ending biennial. And it leaves us with a still healthy balance. What's with the meter reader? The equipment died. The, the, the it's, the, it's the wand that okay. they walk around for the touch read. Um, we're having a whole bunch of problems with it, and without the ability to read those meters, now we're instead of walking up and touching them, we're having to open, open up lids, and it takes it takes a whole lot longer to read those things that way. So, yeah. um, and we've been working with the vendor to keep uploading the saw. It's the, the piece of equipment's dying, and we have budgeted repairs, um, but the equipment is beyond its useful life, I think it's eight years, mm. and um, it's just dying, and that's the lifeblood of our water department. Yeah. 
Um, so you really want to keep that technology working correctly. Do we, what, what's our source? What's our source? Uh, we're going to pay for that um, currently identified out of fund balance. Out of okay. water sewer. Well, okay. Yeah, water out of the water sewer, excuse me, yeah. Okay. And so what we had in the biennium budget was uh, $2.5 million to close the biennium. And so with this amendment, it will close about $1.9 million. But, um, and you're looking at the 75000 for Salmonberry Bethel. Um, and we're, that's coming out of impact fees. Impact fees, it should. And is just a question, is that something that we do now or do we wait for our Bethel design study? It's, we're waiting for the Bethel design, but we're doing the budget amendments so that so we're that we ready to, do that. to okay. start the design okay. um, when, when we get the corridor study. Okay. So is the only thing we're not, or what's our funding source for the 400000 for Arnold Creek? Stormwater utility. That's stormwater. Yeah, and then the one comment I want to make on is that since I'm new enough to stormwater, and stormwater is relatively a new fee and what it can be restricted for. Right now we're talking about it can be used for stormwater fee and we're going to use the stormwater fund, and if we do, there's plenty of funds to do that. So we would have an ending biennial budget of $1.2 million after using the 400000 um, But just so we're clear and transparent, uh, using these enterprise funds, we're going to start to document that with Public Works that you know this is the case we're making for using stormwater funds um, so we're upfront about it, and this is why we can use that. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. And I'm only saying that because I'm just new enough to where I'll ask enough questions like, well, how can we use some water funds well, for this? How, what's the connection here? I don't know. And, and documenting it so that it's plainly clear to an auditor when they pull yeah, the file up the is, right. is not a bad thing. You okay. know, if they can pull the file and not have to even ask you the question, right? You know, it's much clearer. Yeah. Right. And the, and the other thing that <clears throat> Nick brought up is that um, currently this was in the transportation improvement plan, uh, this Annapolis Creek design work, and if it's a stormwater project, does it not belong then in the stormwater comp plan? Mm -hmm. So part of this is really good because we're going to start to align our projects in the proper comp plans, identifying the right funding sources, and we're going to carry that through it from a six-year stormwater plan, transportation plan, and capital improvement plan. So I think this will be a really good exercise for us to, yeah. to more appropriately align those and commit to those. Two th clarifications there too, and the reason it was in the transportation plan before, we, we were just going to replace the box culvert, okay? The scope, we got involved with the West Sound LIO, and now it's a basin restoration, it's, which is a box culvert and the, all, the way all, all the way up. Um, so that that's what the, that's why this design is four hundred thousand dollars before it was four hundred thousand dollars to replace a, a culvert um now it's now we're adding four hundred to it yes because it's now so so that's why before it was a transportation project because it was just in the roadway now it's a stormwater project because it's the water it's the basin do we anticipate getting funding from we that's that is the hope that we didn't we didn't score well because we didn't have a design that we would go back whether it be the LIO I don't think has a whole lot of money I think it's going to be something Brianna helps us with or some mitigation money from somewhere because we've got this restoration project identified and designed and we can you know and it might end up being in piece the construction could be in actual phases you know we know we need to take on the culvert when we build the pathway right. and then upstream from that you know there's always we're always getting pushed to do the uh, the, uh, the name too uh, it is in a Annapolis and we've been corrected it is no no it is it this is correct it is Annapolis Creek but it's uh, it's not it's, Arnold it's, Creek it's Arnold, Arnold, it's Arnold Road, Road. Oh, yeah. Annapolis oh, Creek okay. underneath it yeah okay. and the state actually calls it Annapolis Creek too so we want to be consistent with what yeah. the state okay. calls it so we call it and we yeah. budget yeah. for it properly it's yeah. Clayton Park and Central Park all over again <laughs> Uh, the only other thing I want to talk about the mid value review, so this will come forth in November 14th. I want to ask your thoughts on kind of what you guys see as kind of that presentation. Uh, we did it at a study session. Uh, I can do a condensed staff report of the mid value review and put forward the budget amendment, or we could go through uh, a little more comparison of what we did before the study session. Um, so I'm just curious on what your thoughts are for the 14th. Everybody was present. Yeah. I, I think a the summary rate yeah. is probably more than enough. Anybody wants yeah, to ask? Just remind everybody that yeah. you know, kind of your 
This is how you were taking everything out and just looking at that next year, and this is the only thing that survived. Yeah. Okay. And that's all I'll bring forward with the budget amendment. Great. All right. What's next? All right. The revenue sources review. So I put forward in here uh, the proposed presentation. Again, want your thoughts, feedback of how I could change this, make it clear. Um, I think you guys are used to seeing this, at least it's unfold. Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. there shouldn't be anything too unfamiliar in here. Follow the same format that you guys have historically, and, and just want to walk through this. So we'll set the stage by talking about uh, RCW 8455 120, which requires us to hold a revenue sources hearing when we're adjusting the property tax levy. And the part of that uh, presentation and hearing, we review all sources of funding for the general fund. <coughs> I'm going to put forward um, for the council um, the current biennial budget. Again, we haven't changed anything from an amendment standpoint, so I'm just going to remind them this is what we adopted. Uh, for tax revenue, we got 18 million for the buying income in. And that's the next slide will show how that 18 million dollars is broken down uh, and how we've allotted by fiscal year 17 18. But again, our budget was on a biennial basis, so that's what's really important. The allotment is more for cash flow purposes and help us kind of track whether we think we're uh, doing that properly. Now, on the property tax side, which we'll come to in a few more slides, um, that is important by the speakers because that's the whole point of this meeting, is that the revenue sources hearing uh, to, in order to set our property tax levy. Right. So that's just, again, what we budgeted in the biennial. Uh, the next slide is an all sources funding slide for the biennium. Uh, so it includes our tax revenue plus all our other um, charges for services, license permits, um, miscellaneous revenue. Um, just out of three and a half million dollars worth of other revenue that we receive or at least budgeted for. So the very first one is property, that's property sales or not property tax, that's already separated. Yes. Yeah, not a great differentiation in color there. Yeah. Yeah. We can work on that. Okay. Retail sales, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it seems to be a little. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> retail. Or maybe, maybe I'll relabel it. And just differentiate those two colors yeah. a little better. Yeah, yep. blend together. Yeah. Yeah, if you could use the same colors, it's on the other chart. And it would be consistent. Oh, yeah, you can do that. Yeah. Okay. Three. Yeah, why am I losing the three million? Because we have this total of eighteen million. So the eighteen million is only tax revenue. And then Okay, and then this in, other is um, is license permits, charges for goods and services. Okay, okay got it. Miscellaneous. Got it. Okay, yeah. got it. Okay. So we focused on just the tax revenue first and then we brought in the yep. other funding sources. Yep. So Maybe I'm getting confused now. You've got for this other category 3.4, and yet on page three it's 3.8 of other taxes. Are there what's missing? So um, yes, the 3.4 is other revenues. Mm -hmm. This is other taxes. So if you look to page four. Oh. oh. Yeah. That you were doing the same no. thing. I was. Yeah. There's yeah. this three eight. And then there's this three four, which is the other tax. Yeah. This is other tax identified on page four. That's our electric, telephone, utility taxes, mm -hmm. garbage, okay. TV, right. cable. So that's other taxes, um, our minor taxes. And then maybe it's because the numbers are so similar, yeah. uh, we get to our other funding sources, are the revenues, uh, charges for goods, and miscellaneous. Okay. Okay. Uh, turn to slide six now. Um, I wanted to bring in some actuals. Uh, just as, again, as an update, this is the biennial budget versus our actual. 
Again, when we adopt the budget, we adopt it on a biennial basis. So we have received in sales tax revenue $3.4 million year to date, and as a percentage of our overall biennial budget, it's roughly 40%. Property tax, 1.4, roughly 27%. Um, other taxes, 36% of what we've budgeted on a biennial basis. Now, the, the reason I show it this way as again, we're not doing it. We're not budgeting on a fiscal year basis, so we have to look a little bit longer term when right. we do biennial. Uh, so it can give you some perspective where we are at on a biennial basis, as opposed to an annual basis. Why does it appear that property tax is trending? So far off. That's because we haven't got our second, second large. Yeah, in, yeah, that'll come in, in this month. month. Yeah, so it's a little skewed. Yeah, next month. Or not skewed, a little, uh, you know. Yeah, we'll catch up next yeah. month. That's right. So. Yep. Two big installments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. April and October. Yep. And we see it in May and November. Yeah. Because the county sits on it for a couple of weeks. Yep. And I will point out a couple good things on this. Um, so license and permits. Down here at the bottom in our in our other revenues category, uh, we're currently at 53% of what we budgeted for the biennial. So at this point in the year, you know we're more than halfway through. Is a lot of that NYX operation? Yes. Yeah. So housing starts um, permits. So I was trying to get a figure as far as you know how many housing residential do we budget for, and then where are we at. I don't have the figure yet, but I think that'd be interesting Nick, to talk about. Nick could easily provide it for you. Yeah. yeah. So, but I think that's good. Yeah. I mean, at least we're ahead yeah. of a mid-year review. The other, <laughs> yeah. the other thing that I thought was interesting was this miscellaneous revenue. Again, I don't know what this driver is yet. Um, I mean, Kevin Heidi look into it for me because we were just going through Bake this yesterday. So, somehow we're well ahead of our biennial figure on, on miscellaneous revenue. <coughs> this fines and forfeitures being low, when, when Sean and I were meeting with the, the judges uh, to put our questions together, one of the questions they had us add, and I can't even remember, but the case escapes me, but the judges now can't impose fines the way they used to. $43 is, uh, unless the prosecutor can show the, their ability to pay. And so, and, and it isn't, a, he, you know, it, they said it isn't that big, at least in the county, it isn't that big of a deal because most of the folks that are getting in your courtroom that are getting fined, um, getting okay. these great big fines, it ends up to collections. You might collect right. some of it somewhere down the road, um, but there was some court case that uh, that went through, I think, Supreme Court that that judges now can't impose mm -hmm. fines that people can't pay. Don't have the financial ability, and it's up to they have the prosecution has to. So that's one of our interview questions. Uh, as as being knowledgeable of this case, um, so anyway, so that that could be an in part of why our fines and forfeitures is down because there's been a, some case law that's changed. Infractions. They're infractions. Yeah. Problem is, is you couple that with the increased jail bill, and something's not right. That yeah. hasn't changed this year, so it's probably fine. Yeah, I d don't disagree with you. <laughs> <laughs> So that's a good point because that's something to watch because we are, you know, behind in that revenue mm -hmm. source. So if you look out for the biennium, you know, we should be close around 40%, you know, through mm -hmm. September, three quarters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that one may come in under budget, mm -hmm. which is not good on the revenue side. Should it be three quarters? No, I can't. I just did it. It's, it's 37.5. Good. Yeah, I was going to say it when you're talking a two-year budget. Because I was, yeah, because I, well, I was looking at this percentage for sales yeah. tax, and I knew sales tax was up mm -hmm. from what we projected. So, so then yeah. I'm going, yeah. so yeah. then I'm going, what is yeah. nine <laughs> months out of 24? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's 37.5. Yeah. yeah, okay. So we're half a percent ahead. Right, but you can see, and when property taxes come in, that should put us up. <coughs> where we would anticipate yeah. another taxes right. is, is is just right there. Right. Yeah. So overall, we're on track. Um, yeah, thirty-six point eight. Yeah. Nine is pretty close. Yeah. 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 Well, the other yeah. thing is, the, the other the revenues. Yeah. yeah. Seem to have more fluctuation, but their dollar amounts are considerably so, yeah. smaller. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. 
Yep. But sales tax would be, or excuse me, the additional property tax would be in the fourth quarter of this year. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be yeah. in November. Yeah. Okay. We'll see it in November. So. Okay. So then moving on to there, then we'll start to talk about slide seven, um, the property tax history. Again, the point of this meeting is to uh, get the revenue sources out there so we can uh, set our property tax levy for the coming year to fund our general fund activities. Um, we don't have a number here for the 2017 actual assessed value because you just used that 1.532. So I might just put that, bring that down if that makes it a little cleaner. I probably would. Okay. And again, uh, what we received your date was 1.466. Uh, we expect Dr. October to come in and uh, hopefully hit our 2.699 mark. Um, so what we have here in 2018 is what we would levy uh, for 2018 property taxes, $2.8 million. Uh, the assessed value again comes from is the Is this county. the number this has come from up the hill? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, and I think I have a breakdown on the further slides. So, um, but that's what we put forward in the property tax certificate and the ordinance. Uh, slide eight just again uh, shows reflects on the history. Uh, there was a big jump in 2017 from 2016. And I don't know if that's just due to increased assessed value. It looks like there was a big jump in assessed value. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Certainly, the one thing that we've been benefiting from in more than one area is just the growth mm -hmm. right right um, slide nine again the property tax comparison looking at 2018 uh, what was levied versus 2018 what we're going to levy um, you, in the far right column you have what was levied in 2017 the two two point seven million dollars um, the 23,000 is increased due to, to AV, assessed value increases. Um, new construction represents 38,000. And although I'm putting in an estimate right here for utilities of 10,000, talking that over with the county assessor, you can see last year in 2017 that was zero. In 2016, I think it was zero. In 2015, it was 5,000. Uh, but she doesn't have the value yet, so it's an estimated placeholder that um, if we don't put something in here and something does come in, then we don't get to collect on that. So uh, a safe approach would be put something there. Uh, that way, if utilities does have some value, you can collect on it. If it doesn't, you know, they're only going to levy what you can levy. They're going to cap you. What about the library? What effect do, on this will the library so, ballot um, measure pass? Yeah, have? I'm glad you brought that up. So right now, I'm proposing, hey, here's the $2.8 million of property tax revenue that we need. Mm -hmm. If the, the library measure passes, um, we would expect this to drop down to about two point seven million dollars. Okay, so a hundred thousand. About a hundred thousand, yeah. And these are just rough estimates. Talking with Canada, eighty to a hundred thousand dollar impact. So even though we're saying yes, we're going to set this for two point eight million. Once it's all said and done, they close twenty seventeen. We might find that our tax levy is really closer to two point seven, which would be the same as twenty seventeen. Uh, we'll move on and talk about then retail sales and use taxes. Uh, again, very important to the city as well. Uh, we saw a little bit already that we know it's um, on track. I would use the term on track. You say up, you know. I mm -hmm. um, right. say on track because you, you never right. know how sales tax is going right. to go. Um, so year to date, we've collected $3.4 million. We budgeted or we allotted $4.5 um, So we're 77% of what we budgeted and a lot of for a single fiscal year. I was going to say the 4.5 is for the year as Correct. opposed to the actual is only for the first three quarters. Correct. And you'll notice the heading I changed it from budget to estimated over here. Yeah. Because again, we don't budget on a fiscal year basis on the buy-in. Right. Last um, year we collected 1.2 million in the fourth quarter. You said that off the top of your head? Right. That's right. Oh, oh good. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Pulling that out. Yeah, no, he's good. What a memory. Yeah, I, I gotta write that down somewhere. Um, so, yeah, 77%. Again, I say we're three quarters of a year, we're right on track. Yeah. Um, 
for what we expect, which is good. And then we also looked at, and maybe that's on the next slide, I'll have to look. Um, so what we have a lot of for 2018 is $4.6 million in increase as well. Um, and what we looked at, um, when we looked on slide 12, we actually looked at the historical trends here. So these are actuals. These we're, are actuals. Yeah, so we have been talking about budgets. So now we're going to talk about actuals and how sales tax has actually increased. Um, on the far right here, we in included a new column showing annual growth rate. So we're looking at 2017 compared to 2016 on a monthly basis. Um, overall, we're averaging about 3% in our annual growth rate. And that's consistent with our annual growth rate from year to year. What you might want to, um, when you do the presentation, you might want to remind people that we received the sales tax on a two month delay. 60 days. Yeah. Because what we see in February was December's it's Christmas. Sales tax. Yeah. Oh, correct. Yeah. Or would it be helpful to somehow have a year-to-date percentage? You got these monthly comparisons. I don't know how you would incorporate that. Well, you just have that over here. It's got it back here. Yeah, that 70, 70, 70, 70. But this is the growth. You say it's 3%. Oh, oh I, I was looking at an average, yeah. So, year. Yeah, this yeah. is just showing me months. Yeah, it's a year. 4.6 yeah. yeah, what did you tell me? It's the wrong document. Right. Yeah. Right. But well, these are just a little different. Than and they're just a little bit different. That's right, because these are based uh, on projections. Projection. Yeah. These are based on actuals. Yeah. 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 So when we budget, we budget a little bit lower, hoping sales kind of come in, so that projection is a little bit larger, which is helpful for budgeting. And when we're thinking about, you know, are we um, going to be under or over revenue? Yeah. Um, but when you're looking at the actuals, it's important to look at the actuals. Say, okay, are we tracking to what we've collected last year? Are we really growing? Um, not only are we being conservative in our budget, but are we actually growing? Mm -hmm. And at what pace? You know, is, it, is it a reasonable and sustainable rate? So, Rob, was there something else you wanted me to well, change here? Well, you've got these are comparisons carrying this way. Correct. Year to date, what is the actual percentage of growth? Okay. Over, over budget? Over, 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 over actual. Over These are actual, actual, okay. actual, actual year to date, actual percentage compared of growth. to last yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can do that. Yeah, the comparison would be helpful. Mm -hmm. it's, it's three, not it's just three what it point is. something. It's right. just yeah. you know having that number down there. there. Yeah, absolutely. So still good news, and then we um, just illustrate it with some bar charts. Um, again, blue would be 2017. You see, for the most part, we're, we're growing. Other um, than June. Other than, yeah, other than June, yeah. And if these are too many charts and graphs, let me know. I can take them out if we're saying the same thing too many times. Yeah. We all well. learn differently. Yeah. And I'm not sure our other council members or people in the audience, you know, some of them the graph may be important, others the yeah. numbers may be important. Right. So I don't know that it's too many. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I didn't want to change anything. Yeah. I just wanted to update the numbers yeah. and add in some actuals. Keep and then your presentation under an hour. Oh, it will yeah. be. <laughs> <laughs> Did Alan go longer than an hour? If you see yeah. us nodding oh, off. Yeah. About uh, 10 minutes. Sorry, guys. That sounds about right. Um, and this slide was in there um, because it had a, there was a comment that you guys had an interest in it, so I left it in there again. This is just for the biennium, just um, again putting out there what we budgeted for. I didn't put any actuals in here yet, um, and, I, and I guess I didn't put any actuals in here because I'm, I'm still not comfortable yet, new enough, so I don't feel comfortable telling these stories yet. I don't know what this in means. In the future, that, I think that would be beneficial. Yeah, you know, no, I, to, I, to I have like actuals. Yeah, in there. yeah, in the future, and I'd like to talk about again. Although we're receiving this revenue, how much is in fund balance and how much is restricted for these type of projects that we've programmed out, so how much is really available yeah, for new projects. Be right. Because yeah. that, that's what you want to report on. That's what I want to report available on. Because we can spend that money six ways. That's yeah. right. Tell us. <laughs> that's right. So I just want to put out the biennial budget out there again, yeah. just as a reminder to the audience and that, yes, these were our, part of our revenue sources. I might, in this, just for this year, I might drop, this is redundant and it's not new information. 
I might drop that one out of there until you have actuals okay. in, in next year's. Because it's just going to, well, where are, because you're going to get the question, where are we? And we're not ready to report that yet. Okay. So in future, I'd like this, but with actuals, but right now, I don't believe it's relevant. Okay. That's easy. I believe this is, yes. Uh, Second to the last slide. Let's go back to that slide. Okay. This side. Yeah. Look at. Look at the REIT number. We've got on REIT 1, 301,000 in, in, in 17 and in 18, 326 for a biennial total of 6. Can it add REIT 2 to it as well, though? Okay, so so this 600 is these two is I'm trying to put it to this six. Yeah, it looks like it looks like this was just rounded yep. to six. Okay. Where this is like what six oh eight six oh eight six oh nine six oh eight five. Yeah, this would be what six fifty eight. Okay, so this what we're looking at here is a combination of both one and two, and this is the balance. And Correct. This is the collection. Correct. Okay, I got it. I'm good. And, I, and what I notice here too, Noah, is that in your realist in this report, you're okay. saying you're you grade on almost 112, but you're saying it, you, if that's your additions, you're saying almost 114. That's they're not jiving. 112 here, and then on this report, and here's your here's your read here, Fund 109, Fund and you're saying you've made. This ledger report. It's one thirteen. It's one thirteen. Wait about those jive. We're diving down into the weeds. Those, no, that's those, a good question. I can. Where are you seeing the yeah. one thirteen? That's the. Con I believe this period amount is the contribution. Oh, oh. Yeah. And, in, and we're saying it was 111. 111. Seven, yeah. And it's 113.3. Yeah. So just make sure these reports tie back to each other. Well, this is an actual report out of the system. Uh, this is exported data. Yeah. So I'll have to look and see when this was time stamped. Yeah. Um, but no, that's good. That's good catch. Well, I. No, no, just a second. Uh, um, maybe that's. No, it's. Okay, if you take that 1,849,000, okay, that comes over here. 849, where are you at? Okay. To the 109. Okay. There, well, there's the 1,849,000 at end balance there. Right. That mm -hmm. jives. So maybe. That's what I'm wondering is if this, this table yeah. here. Um, That's fund balance there. So anyway, there's. This is, okay, th this part right here mm -hmm. is collecting REIT 1 and 2 together. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. And the other is separating out what is REIT 1, what is what REIT, REIT two, 2 for the balance. For and the that balance, balance yeah. okay. goes back to mm -hmm. here. Yeah. And we're, our REIT 1 total isn't, you know, once again, we see these balances. We've got commitments. That, that fund has barely $100,000 in it by the time we pay City Hall payment and all the other That's things good. we've said we're yeah. going to do with yeah. REIT 1 this year. Well, it looks healthy. And there's, REIT 2 is really healthy, but it's very restricted money. It'll be in Village Parks probably, you know, if we have cost overruns there, that's what they'll get leaned on. Sorry, I took us down a rabbit hole that wasn't necessary. No, that's that's, that's good because I'm still trying to get familiar with all these right. different reporting documents. So we're gonna drop fourteen. Fourteen. Drop fourteen. And then the last one that we'll just show again another graph of property tax revenue. Uh, again, help to explain why currently it's at twenty-seven percent of our year date because we haven't received our second half property taxes. Right. Yeah. So again, just showing the cash flow impact of property tax revenue. 
Well, you're reporting on this when? November 14th. 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 So we may have no, 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 I'm sorry. No. 24th. Yeah. 24th. Yeah. That's yeah. right. So we're November 24th? October 24th. October 24th. I was going to say, yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Wow. That's, you're pushing a way out. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> we, we're trying to avoid a second meeting in December. <laughs> yeah. November 24th. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Sure. We could do it on Over December 24th if you want. <laughs> Looks good. Is that what you guys are looking for? And yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks, yeah. Good. looks good. Okay, so I'll make those changes that we talked about. Um, for that. So that'll be good. Um, so that's coming for next week. Now the next three items are primarily discussion pieces. I don't think I had anything in here for them. No. Good. Um, so the salary cola review. I want to give you, give you an update. So we have our contracts. Some of the contracts specify how we're to adjust salaries and benefits for COLA. So we did the calculation, the CPI for June was up 3%, um, but the contracts are capped at 2.5% for public works. So I'm just gonna read these down the line so you are aware of what the changes are gonna be. Uh, the public works contract is going to have a COLA of 2.5%, the court contract 2.5%, uh, police support staff 2.5%, Police Guild Patrol Officers 2.3%. So they actually wrote into their contract they wanted 2.3%. They decided not to take the risk of the CPI. Mm -hmm. So, and again, the way the rate uh, was written in the contract, it was a range. It was uh, uh, no less than 1.8, but a maximum 2.5. They, did, they didn't take a range. CPI. They took fixed yep. numbers, yep. and we yep. front loaded it. The sergeants also are 2.3%. So that covers all our unionized employees and the COLAs that will affect them. Um, so what I'd like to do is bring forward, and again, following your guys' pack, past practice of offering a COLA also to non-unionized representatives. Um, so I'd bring forward a COLA of 2.5% to the non-union reps, and I'd bring it forward in a resolution at the 14th meeting, November so, 14th. But when we did the biannual budget, we already um, calculated those yeah. numbers yeah. or estimated yeah. that, estimated, so it's yeah. not. No, yeah. yeah, this is no budget impact, so we've already built right. it into the budget. Um, Just the salary yeah. ordinance has to be Correct. approved. Correct. Yes. Yeah. And how is, I know Rebecca's been back a week. How two days. Are, two, yeah, two days. <laughs> yeah. um, we also have the salary survey and a phased implementation yeah. of that, yeah. and I know she's the one that's been primarily working on that. How are we yeah. doing on truing that up? So Cor Corey's working on that right now, so she's still working on that. Um, we feel confident from a budgeting perspective that we, we have cushion, but uh, we, we're not complete with that yet. Okay. So as soon as she's complete with that, then we'll bring it back. Okay. At least to this committee. Please bring it to this committee and yeah. talk about what we're implementing. Yeah, this is just going to head of our obligations on their sure. contract and then and what's anticipated expected by non, non the reason I'm asking is I want to know where we're at financially we need to get Mark some clerical help but I'm not comfortable advocating for that until I know we've paid for all the obligations that we've already committed to you know and this is one of them and that truing up the the right. salary survey is another big piece of that and making right. sure we got enough money to do all of those things and as a reminder, you guys may know this better than I, but um, so there was two phases to the salary survey work. Uh, I don't remember the, I don't know the percentage of number of employees impacted by the first phase, but I think it was a large percentage of the employees actually had that their salaries adjusted to current markets. And then there was a small portion of employees, I think primarily just the department heads. We brought everybody within 5%, and then if there were some anomalies that were up to 15, 16%, and so we didn't give anybody. Everybody got within 5%, 5%. and it's, uh, and if you were within 5%, we made you whole. Right. And then there was, we were gonna take, the goal was, it was either at the end of this year, if we could afford to, and if not, for sure, in, at the beginning of the next budget process, we would have everybody. Bring those others every, back into the range. Yeah, everybody yeah. would to, to make them whole. Just a time to update them again. Yes. <laughs> so are you guys comfortable with that? If I bring a resolution yeah. forward on the 14th? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll follow your past formats and I'll bring that forward. Um, the next item, electronic signatures on checks. I'm very excited for this. Uh, 
think so. Save Rob and Sean lost signal signing of checks. So currently they both manually sign the checks. Uh, in this day and age, we don't need to do that. What we would, what I would propose is that we uh, identify and adopt electronic signatures. So Rob would sign and I would sign. We'd have that uploaded to our well, system. Well, eventually you'll sign when we change the when code. The, when the code gets changed. But right so now it's so brandy. brandy. It's Brandy and I. So Brandy and Rob will sign, and then we'll update that image to our software system. And then when we print the checks, they'll actually have the signatures on the bottom of the check. Uh, again, this is going to be helpful for Rob, but also for our staff as well, because they're not going to have to worry about trying to find Rob and Sean to schedule time to make sure that they get checks signed so they can get out in the mail in a timely manner. Uh, you'll, you'll still review the checkbook at the council meeting. Yep. I'll still review the checks. I'm just not going to have to sign the check. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I don't even know, as the mayor pro tem, if you saw that at the council meeting, I, it's up to you whether you need to come. I mean, everything that's in that pile of checks is on that register. I don't know that the mayor pro tem now, as long the as... The mayor pro tem no, should never need no. to sign come, checks. Come and sign the check, totally. as long as the yeah, council yeah. has... Uh, is, uh, Absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. just the normal yep. approval process. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll take that. That that's the probably the biggest burden is tracking somebody that doesn't work here nine to five and come in and come spend two hours signing checks. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's we've been doing that in transit for years and it's wonderful. Right. Yeah. And our accounts payable is usually at yeah. least that big. So. Yeah. Ours too. Yeah. <laughs> So that's a great step in the right direction as far as yeah, gaining some efficiencies around here. I was surprised here. a year ago that you were still signing checks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it sounds like you guys are okay. Do you see any other council members having concerns about that? I don't think we, I'm gonna check with Brandy, see if there's any action we need to take, but this is more operational. I'm just kind of making aware of this change. Uh, you guys probably won't even notice. Mm -hmm. person knows it's hard to predict other council members' reactions, but I can't imagine it being a surprise or a big deal. Yeah. We're just bringing ourselves up to 1980. Yeah, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> All the way to there, huh? We're, we're not trailblazers on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Baby steps. Um, the last item I have up for discussion here t today, at least, is uh, GAP versus cash accounting. Uh, so currently we are a GAP accounting. Uh, I don't know if you guys were aware of that mm -hmm. um, or even care. Uh, but under GAP accounting, um, the restrictions are far heavier than under cash. Um, most municipalities in the state are cash accounting. Um, the very, very large ones are GAP because they have large staff and they see some value in having that GAP accounting. I've talked with SAO, I've talked with other cities, and I always ask the same thing, well, what's the value you get from GAP? Because we spend about six months just trying to get our reporting up to a GAP standard that we can submit. Um, it doesn't change anything other than what we're reporting. Depreciation. It does have a change in depreciation how we report that. Um, well, you don't report it in cash. You don't cash. report it in cash, can you? So you would report it in GAP, don't report it in cash. There's some little nuances to it, but overall value, benefit, um, there's some cost benefit analysis already been down there because other cities have looked at this. What you're finding right now is a lot of cities are moving away from GAP to cash because if GASB continues to come out with new rules, we have to abide by it. I think we're up to like 84.90 now different uh, notes to the financial statements. Um, so I'd like to see this city, I'd advocate for moving from cap to cash. Can uh, you tell me how many, uh, before we get too yeah. far into this, how many cities, I mean there's 250 yeah. cities out there and how many are doing it this way and how many, I mean. Last I looked, which was about a month ago, I think 62 cities are gap, the rest are all cash. Okay. Of the 62, uh, from a size of population and dollars, we rank 57 out of the 62. So we're on the small we're tail. We're at the end. bottom end of that. Yeah. So, yeah. so you have Seattle, I think, is number one, and we're at the little tail back here as far as population. And as you get to, I think the next city up from us is actually about five or 6,000 population higher than we are. And then you just kind of see these big leaps. Um, so again, most cities, because of all the requirements that are put upon you, and no one really sees the value, I mean, I can't get anybody to tell me what the value is other than... Um, this, so this is a reason, not a reason not to do it, but politically, I'm on the CENCOM board, and they changed to cash accounting, and the executive director ramrodded it through without a very good explanation, in my opinion. He came to 
our board meeting and said we're going to do this and I asked a bunch of bunch of questions and he said he'd get back to me he didn't get back to me in the next board meeting he came with the resolution to change it and I shot him between the eyes and we I lost the vote but I made a stink about it the well, as Rob and I come from this banking background, mm -hmm. and all of our accounting was, you know, yep. FASB accounting. Yep. We, you know, we had standards, um, yep. you know, rules, and so I guess I'm comfortable with GAP because I know their rules. I know that there's a standard that you're accountable to. Our finance department is accountable to these standards. If we move to cash, what are those standards? You know, it's funny, yeah, coming from the private sector, you have to be accountable to FASB. Well, in Washington State, because we have a, a unique accounting uh, restriction that uh, the SAO prescribes our accounting standards, they almost, in effect, took replace of that FASB requirement. So because Washington prescribes how we account and do our stuff, that's what cash is. It's a prescribed accounting method reporting standardization. Okay. So it's already right, taken on that role of FASB. Now, once you apply GAP to it, you're now holding the municipalities to a much higher standard of reporting than they would otherwise need to because all I was trying to point out is, is I don't believe the executive director over there he's not the finance director I don't fully I think he fully understood what he was doing and he couldn't explain it and I, I wasn't comfortable with it and if maybe we're gonna do <coughs> we're gonna do this we yeah. need to be maybe at a future finance committee you could just bring a chart and just get the comparisons you yeah, yeah. one side cash into the other and we seem to be very deliberate about the process and explaining oh, what, what we're doing and why. Yes. I put it on the docket today because I want to make you aware of kind of what I was thinking and to bring more information forward so we can do this um, pros, con, look at it. I want to make you guys comfortable with it, first of all. And I'll bring some numbers to say, hey, this is where everybody's switching. I'm talking with Shelton, who just switched um, from yeah, gap yeah. to cash. I'm talking with Bremerton, wish they could switch. Or they want to, the finance folks want to, but. Uh, some others don't. So you kind of get these personality driven decision making where if you talk to people, say, hey, what's the value you're gaining from this? Have you ever picked up and read your annual report under GAP? And you could, can you tell me what's great about it? Most people say, no, I've never picked up the annual report. Okay, so why are we spending six months trying to produce something that nobody reads? Why don't we just adhere to what the state requires and, you know, policymakers have enough information to make good decisions? So I'll bring this forward uh, to another finance. Yeah, not no changes today. I'm not bringing any resolutions forward. Yeah. Just kind of make you aware of what I'm thinking. And I'll bring some more information forward. Right. I, I think it's worth. I agree with Sean. I think it's worth further discussion. Yeah. And then I would I would like to know, is the information we're looking at going to look differently? Will your, we know your, where your, to find your things? depreciation yes. disappears? That's that's that is the big difference. Um, we don't have receivables in government. To speak we about. don't really have depreciation either. Do we no, do. We do. We do on our utilities. We have to report it, but we don't really. We don't. We don't. Do anything we don't. About it. it doesn't. We don't do, fund we don't it. Fund it. Fund it. it isn't a tax benefit. Right. Because it's, it's, it's just. It's just. Yeah. Yeah. We're we're, right. we're we taking the assets and depreciating them over their useful life. It's just a line item in the financial statement. We should be funding it, but we don't because right. we can't afford to. Right. That's that's exactly right. And and when I talk to some other cities and SAO. We start talking about depreciation. I'm new to GAP because I came from cash. And cash was great. When I came to GAP, I said, oh my God, why are you guys doing this? Nobody reads this. Nobody cares about this. Nobody's just going to depreciate the road out there because it doesn't make any sense unless you start funding towards a depreciation schedule, which nobody's doing because nobody can afford to do it. Yeah. And that's exactly what they said. They said, that's the problem is that GAP has put these rules on and you're supposed to be funding it towards this depreciation schedule. And all the municipalities say, hey, we can't afford to do this. So why are you trying to require us to do this? Um, rather, for new, in, you know, in government, what we do is we adopt transportation improvement plans, uh, stormwater plans, capital plans. That's our avenue for replacing our assets. Are there any impacts to the federal projects? No. I have, at least no one's been able to tell me yet. Um, the only argument that someone put forth was, oh, the, the, the bonds, someone, someone that, maybe in your bond documents you have some requirement for GAP. I haven't seen anything under ours. And the bond market might require under a gap. And my response is, you know, of the six, you know, 250 cities in the state of Washington, only 60 are doing gap. The bond market isn't caring about gap versus cash. 
you know, it's a general obligation pledge. They're looking at your cash flows. You know, we're all cash. I mean, in reality, municipalities are all cash. All cash. Yeah. We got no accounts receivable. I think this can make sense. I just, my political objection to it before it was the process yeah. we went yeah. to it at CENTCOM it just got ramrodded through without explaining it to the board or the public and this is one situation where Becky and Erickson and I were on the same team and then I had fire commissioners and fire chiefs afterwards walk, walk them, well I, you know because they don't you know you're you're bank you're a banker what what's wrong with this and I said I don't know yeah. I said it wasn't explained well to us and we're making decisions with half the information. That was my whole you know yeah, we should, uh, problem. If we ended up moving down this road then we'd probably go through a work study. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah, we need a very detailed pro this is this is yeah. why. This yeah. doesn't make any if it doesn't make any sense, you know, and it's That's gonna the save us money. Thing is we just right. need to understand why. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, 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 for the sake of changing. And communicate it. So I got one little quick thing that's not on the agenda, and I'm, I'm mentioning it in my mayor's report next week. The census is coming, and there's a there's an acronym for it. I can't work. It escapes me. Uh, of us update. It's very important in the census that we have accurate addressing uh, and accounting for people because each household's worth four thousand dollars to it. This is what I read in the in the, in the document. Um, we did this process verification process in house um, the last sentence says this we historically have spent about four thousand dollars in staff time and we were a much smaller city in the past um, the county is offering to do this process for us and roll it into their <coughs> process for ten thousand dollars and uh, then we don't have to you know take any of our valuable staff time to do it um, we could probably do it, if, uh, you know, a tiny bit cheaper, but we don't have the manpower right now to do it. So the the we've got to make a decision by the end of this year whether we're going to participate with the county. It'd be a 28, 2019 obligation, though. But we the county for their planning process needs to know if we're going to participate with them or not. So I'll bring it up at the finance committee meeting or excuse me the council meeting of my mayor's report whether or not heads are shaken that I think we should just let the county do it they've got the expertise and the staff to be able to do it versus us using our folks not that I'm distrusting but is there any kind of uh, our review oversight whatever I mean, if if this house is in the county versus in the city I don't know that that's what they're looking at. Um, I don't know the process well enough that that would be. I can have Nick it. speak to that. What what the what this process is because yeah, it would be, be his staff uh, doing what doing, doing this. Doing. What what this process? If he, so he can speak to the process. I would also is. be interested to know if the other cities in the county are going to partner with with the county to do the that. Off, the offer has been made to all of the cities, yeah. and I don't know what other cities are going to. Uh, I just see any time we can take it, you know, from IT to in anything, any time we got, they have a much bigger operation than us and, and versus, you know, looking to, to add to our staff for these one-off projects, um, we just don't have the bandwidth to do it. Well, they have a, a pretty robust GIS system that is probably what they're going to use, I'm assuming, I don't know, that would be... I agree. There's there's a lot of advantages to doing that sort of thing. It's just that I don't understand it well. It's well, kind of like you and your cash accounting. Was yeah, I, 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 I get your point. This all of a sudden they're manipulating it and they're stealing our our citizens to benefit them. And that, what, where's the accountability? Well, I don't to know it? that there's you know it's quite that blatant, but it's more. Of, that's why I was asking. Do we have any kind of oversight or something? Because there's. There's judgment calls. Yeah, mm -hmm. audit, audit a couple pockets. And yeah, that. and just that's it. Okay. Well, I think it'd also be interesting to see what's the relevance of this this count. You, you mentioned it's four thousand dollars. Oh, it's number. a big, oh, it's, it's a big, big deal. Right, but what? It, it's where we. It's when we're getting our monies from the state and the feds. It's the allocation. Yeah. Is it? So it's, it's a 2020 census. Correct. Isn't it? They do yeah. the census every 10 years, and it's um, 
So, so where are the different fundings coming from and where are they going to? From state and dollars. feds to the city. So if your number is short, but it's not it appearing like in our fund balances. Well, it, it comes from different buckets. So some of the Transfer like the alcohol tax uh, is allocated Got based by population. Okay. Transportation so. dollars. <coughs> you know, yeah. so so it's yeah, it's 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 many of our uh, restricted funds, right. but they're funds that come into the city. Um, and so I'll make a note of that for Nick. Just just can you talk about the impact of population on our fund resources? Yeah, and I got a note here too. To I know for the transit, it's yeah. huge. Yeah. Let's get started. Uh, it's kind of yeah. Boils it down. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All these funding sources it equates to four thousand dollars per household. So we want to make sure our household. Well, and it probably here. also will impact the, um, the population projections that we're asked to record. Um, yeah. Account yes. for under yes. growth management yeah. and all of that. So we want as accurate yeah. as we yeah. can get. Yeah. Yeah. How do we get that? Yeah, absolutely. Transit receives formula funding based on what's called the UCA. Mm -hmm. um, and the population determines what size you are. Mm -hmm. We're considered a small transit now. We missed in the last census moving from small to medium by 45 people. 45? 45. 45 people. Uh, Millions which of dollars. Means we currently get about three million a year in formula funds, we would have moved to just over ten. So the next one will get forty five people. So, <laughs> so that's why we want to count every person. For transit, it's really important. Out of requested a recount. <laughs> yeah. Well for the instant replay thrown the red flag. <laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> I know we got right. forty five homeless people somewhere. <laughs> next next meeting oh, yeah. before we all get up and run out the door, I know you guys are Yeah, I'm not in favor of the Friday <laughs> after this. No. Thank you very much. No way. And you guys were hinting at doing something after, before council meetings or something, versus doing it in the morning. Oh. It doesn't matter to me. I, I'm not opposed to that at all. Like if we that, looked at the 21st, like if at 5:15 or if something. If that's better for Noah, I sure have no problem with 515 that. 5:15 to 6:15. Um, I have my homeless committee on the 21st. What time? Uh, 4 to 5.30. I could cut it short. Are you here? To be, it'd be done at 5. Yeah. I, I Start probably, at 5.15? Yeah, I could probably do that. On the I'll be right out here in this. 30? I mean, 45 minutes? How long do we need? We, we, oh, go a little, we usually go about an hour, but I yeah. would say an hour at least. So yeah, so five fifteen to six fifteen. I went to the twenty twenty first twenty first night of council. We don't have council tonight. We have council on the fourteenth and the twenty eighth. That's yeah, that's the work study. You're right. We do have work study. Oh, tonight. we have work study on the twenty first. Okay. Yep. So it'd be before the work study session. Yep. So. Why? Out of curiosity, why 5.15 versus 5? Is that because you he had another meeting? Yeah, I'll just be a couple minutes late. I, I, I'm, my meeting's supposed to go from 4 to 5.30, and I could do, I can just, I mean, it, I'll get done as soon as I can. And I'm, I'm, I'm right out here. I'll just walk back here. So can, can we just schedule it for 5? 5 o'clock, yeah. Perfect. It, it'll it'll move, it'll move my meeting again? along. <coughs> well... I'll be all right. I can't. I can't take the 420 ferry and get. I'll be okay. Don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah. I'll be fine. I'll work from this side on that day. Okay. Okay. 5 p.m. on the 21st. Here. Done and done. Save. Anything for the good of the order? If not, we're adjourned. Okay. Yeah. Okay.